Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. Uh, in today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about anger relationships in regards to uh, parallel lines. Uh, there are five different anger relationships that I'm going to talk about, but I'm splitting it up into two different videos. Um, just because the video is just getting a little too long, you can either search for the second video on YouTube or go to my website, dousehouse.com, and look under the first six weeks worth of lessons. And you should see uh, these names will be similar as, as, as this line right here and this line right here. Uh, but anyways, uh, these angle relationships, uh, all five of them, only exist if we have parallel lines. If we do not have parallel lines, then these angle relationships uh, can't happen. Uh, and so, whenever we have parallel lines, you need to be thinking that these angle relationships could exist. Now, in my class, uh, I teach geometry, we talk about uh, these angle relationships throughout the year. So it's very important that you pay attention and you understand these concepts. It'll just make life a lot easier. Uh, today's video, though, is just over these three angle relationships. We have alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and corresponding angles. These are all angle relationships that are congruent, to, uh, congruent angles relationships, meaning that uh, the angles uh, are all going to be equal to each other. Uh, so congruent and equal basically mean the same thing. Uh, for example, if we have angle 1 is equal to 50 degrees, and angle 2 is equal to 50 degrees, then angle 1 would be congruent to angle 2. And so the equal sign with a tilde above it is the symbol for congruent. Uh, just like the equal symbol and equal mean the same thing. So when we're talking about alternate interior angles or alternate exterior angles or corresponding angles, there are two angles that are congruent to each other. Uh, now you can't have more than just two, but just for uh, right now we're talking about two different angles that are congruent to each other. Um, so before I can jump into those angle relationships, I need to talk about uh, a word transversal. This word transversal is in all my definitions, so you need to make sure you understand what it means. Uh, it's a line that intersects two or more lines. So two or more lines is the key thing here. Uh, so line A is a transversal because it's crossing line M and line L. Uh, but M is not a transversal because it's only crossing line A. So a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. Uh, likewise, I could throw in a third line here. Let's call it line N. Line A is still a transversal because it's crossing at least two lines. So transversal can be a line crossing two lines, three lines, or four lines, but it needs to be crossing at least two lines. Um, also, we're talking about parallel lines today. If we look here, which lines are parallel to each other? Well, line M and line L look like they're parallel, but I'm not 100% certain because there's no statement on here saying that they're parallel. So a way to indicate lines are parallel in geometry is to give them arrows. So line M and line L are parallel to each other because they have the same number of arrows. Uh, I could put two arrows here and two arrows here, and, and these lines are parallel because they have the same number of arrows. But let's say I had one arrow on line M and, one, and two arrows on line L. These are not parallel because they don't have the same uh, number of arrows on each line. And so today we're talking about lines that are, are parallel to each other. And so you're going to be looking at lines that are going to have arrows on there. And those, again, those are, again, are indicating that those lines are parallel to each other. So moving on, we have the first uh, angle relationship we're going to talk about is alternate interior angles. Uh, alternate interior angles, the definition I have my students write down, are congruent angles on the alternate side of the transversal and inside the parallel lines. So alternate and alternate. I, and the, the, the word alternate in the, in, the, in the actual type of angle relationship is also in the definition. Uh, interior of my house, I think of the inside of my house, so that's how these two relate to each other. So we're looking for uh, angles that are inside the parallel lines. So if I look just on the inside of the parallel lines here, angle 1 and 2 and 7 and 8 are eliminated. Um, now alternate side of the transversal. We're looking for angles that are on opposite side of the sides of the transversal. If I focus on angle 3 here, what is an angle on the alternate side of the transversal? And if you're having a hard time with the word alternate, think of the word opposite. So we're looking for angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal. Well, 3 and 4 are opposite sides of the transversal. 3 and 6 are on opposite sides of the transversal. 3 and 5 are not on the opposite sides of the transversal. So 5 is not going to be an alternate interior angle to 3. Uh, now, we, we did inside the parallel lines, 
uh, opposite sides of the parallel uh, uh, of the transversal, we also have the keyword here congruent. Which angle looks like angle three? Uh, angle three is an acute angle, meaning it's less than 90 degrees. What is another angle here that looks like it's an acute angle? Well, six. Of the two, six is the acute angle. Four is obtuse, meaning it's over the over 90 degrees. Uh, so three and six are an example of alternate interior angles. Um, so. Uh, when it comes to parallel lines, something I need to talk about. If the angles look the same, they are the same. Uh, so uh, 3 and 6, since they're both acute, they're going to automatically be equal because these lines are parallel. Um, if these were not parallel, we could not say that, but since they are parallel, we can say that angles 3 and 6 are going to be congruent to each other. Um, now, uh, we have another example of an alternate interior angle. Alternate interior angles come in pair of two. And are in pairs of two. So what is an alternate interior angle to four? Well, inside the parallel lines, uh, opposite sides of the transversal, and looks congruent to it, meaning it is congruent to it, that would be angle five. So four and five is another example of alternate interior angles. Three and six is uh, the other example of alternate interior angles. So that's the two examples that I have mentioned down here. Uh, just like alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles uh, have a lot of the similar qualities as the one we just did before. Uh, alternate exterior angles are congruent angles on the alternate side of the transversal and outside the parallel lines. This is very similar to alternate interior angles. The only thing I'm changing is the word interior to exterior. So if we look here, congruent angles on the alternate side of the transversal and outside, the exterior of my house is the outside of my house. So we're focusing only on angles on the outside of the parallel lines. So I'm eliminating angles three and four and five and six. So let's see here. Uh, alternate side of the transversal, what is an angle on the opposite side? Again, I'm thinking opposite side here of the transversal that is also going to be congruent to it. So if I focus on angle one here, what is another angle? Or what is an angle that's on the opposite side of the transversal and looks equal to it? Well, seven's eliminated. It's not on the opposite sides of the transversal. Does angle one look like angle two, or does angle one look like angle eight? Is angle one obtuse or acute angle? It is obtuse. Angle two is acute. Can't be it. Angle eight is also obtuse, so angle one and eight are an example of alternate exterior angles. Now, just like alternate interior angles, alternate extra angles come in pairs of two. So right here, angle two is an alternate exterior angle to angle seven. Again, they're both outside the parallel lines, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they are congruent to each other. So again, keyword congruent here. So alternate exterior angles um, come in pairs of two as well. Um, now we have corresponding angles. Corresponding is a word you might not understand. Uh, corresponding angles uh, let's look at this definition here, and then I'll talk about a different one here. Uh, I tell my students to write down congruent angles uh, that are on the same side of the transversal and same side of the parallel lines. Uh, another way to look at this are corresponding means basically same spot but a different location. If you were to look at this intersection here as like an uh, intersection in your neighborhood, let's say we have a street M and street L run parallel to each other. We have street A crossing those two streets. If we look at the intersection uh, of these two right here, and if I look at angle one, which angle corresponds to angle one down here? In other words, which angle is in the same spot uh, as angle one in that intersection? Well, that would be angle five. They're both in the top left corner. Corresponding angles are angles in the same spot but different location. Um, we can also look at it as uh, congruent angles are on the same side of the transversal. So if I'm looking at angle one, so everything on the left side of the transversal here, but on the same side of the parallel line, angle one is above the parallel line. Uh, angle five is above the parallel line. So angle one and angle five are example of corresponding angles. Uh, another set of corresponding angles uh, would be like two and six. They're both in the top right corner of the intersection. Uh, unlike uh, alternate interior and, and, and alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles generally come in, in pairs of four. So angle three is another example of a corresponding angle with angle seven. They're both in the bottom left corner of the intersection. And then we also have uh, the last one here. Uh, let's do an upside down triangle. Angle four and angle eight are another example of corresponding angles because they're both in the bottom right corner. So if I were to backtrack, 
Uh, alternate interior angles are angles on the inside of the parallel lines. Uh, alternate exterior angles are both outside the parallel lines. And corresponding angles, well, one of them is on the outside of the parallel lines and one of them is on the inside. Angle 1 is outside the parallel lines, angle 5 is inside the parallel lines. So they kind of conflict with the alternate interior or alternate exterior because it's not both on the inside or both on the outside. Uh, let me talk about something here very, very briefly though. Um, if I were to focus on angle 1, if I said angle 1 was 100 degrees, and if angle 1 is 100 degrees, then angle 5 is also 100 degrees because there's corresponding angles, meaning that they're also going to be congruent. Uh, what is an alternate interior angle to angle 5? Well, alternate interior angle to angle 5 would be angle 4. So since these are con since these are alternate interior angles, they're also congruent, that they're going to be equal to each other. What is an alternate exterior angle to angle 1? Well, opposite sides of the parallel, uh, opposite sides of the transversal, outside the parallels, and congruent is also going to be angle 8. So if 1 is 100 degrees, 8 is 100 degrees because these are alternate exterior angles. Uh, now keep in mind here, if I were to focus on just angles 1 and 2, uh, these are a linear pair. I have videos on linear pairs. Linear pairs are two adjacent angles that add up to 180 degrees. So these two angles equal 180 degrees. If I take 180 and I subtract this 100 degrees here, that means that angle 2 here would be 80 degrees. If angle 2 is 80 degrees, what's the corresponding angle to angle 2? That's angle 6, so this is also going to be 80 degrees. What is an alternate exterior angle to angle 2? Well, that is angle 7 here, so this is also going to be 80 degrees. And then if we look here at angle 3, angle 3 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles, so they're congruent, they're going to be equal to each other. So remember when I said if the angles look the same, they are the same, uh, whenever we're talking about parallel lines, well, 80 and 80, these are both look the same, they are the same. If I look across from it, this angle is acute, this is acute, they're also 80 degrees. And so if you know one angle, whenever we have um, uh, parallel lines, if you know one angle, using these angle relationships, you can figure out what all these other angles are, which is why it's very useful to know what these all these angles are. So, um, very quickly, alternate interior angles, very quickly. Uh, alternate interior inside the parallel lines. This is an example of alternate interior angles. Another example of alternate interior angles. And then if I jump down here, alternate exterior angles, opposite sides of the transversal, uh, but outside the parallels. So one set of alternate exterior angles, another set of alternate exterior angles. And then I'm just going to go with, uh, this is an alternate, uh, sorry, corresponding angles. Same spot, but different location. They're both in the top left corner. This angle 2 and this guy here are congruent to each are corresponding angles. This angle and this angle are corresponding angles. And this angle and this angle are corresponding angles. If you need to pause the video and study this, there are subtle differences between these. Uh, and so that might help you out. But I've got a, a couple examples here. Uh, let's talk about it uh, using numbers here. This is generally how you're going to see this on a test or quiz or something. Identify the angle relationships. Now we're only focusing on these three angle relationships alternate interior angles. They're angles that are both inside the parallel lines. This is inside and outside, can't be it. Outside and outside, can't be it. These are both inside the parallel lines. They're opposite of the transversal and congruent. Alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles are opposite sides of the transversal but outside the parallel lines. Well, these are both outside the parallel lines. They're also Opposite sides of the transversal and congruent, alternate exterior angles. Corresponding. Corresponding is a mixture of inside and outside. Uh, and so there's no interior or exterior here. So we're looking for angles that are in the same location of the intersection, uh, in the same spot of the intersection. So these are both in the bottom left corner here. Uh, they're both congruent to each other. So these are examples of corresponding angles. Anyways, hopefully this video wasn't too long for you. Uh, but anyways, uh, this should be useful for you to, to do better in your class and, and understand these concepts. Uh, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.